what are the weaknesses so let's let's understand uh, you know we have we've seen so far about strengths weaknesses is the most important thing strengths you should not become complacent you know that you need to leverage and you need to further build on those areas where you know those areas that uh, bring a lot of value to your core uh, you know core business uh, as far as uh, weaknesses are concerned it could be a the it could be the capabilities the company lacks so these are the areas that i lack i don't have a clear marketing strategy but i have a good product so this product if if it combined with a good a sound marketing strategy will be able to you know uh, you know help you in terms of increasing your sales increasing your financial performance thereby achieving the profitable growth over a period of 3 years 5 years that you have set for yourself financial resources i lack financial resources how do i raise uh, my uh, financial resources because i am struggling to pay salary i am not able to build new facilities i am not able to update obsolete technologies in my uh, you know uh, uh, facilities uh, so i need more money i need more funds i need more capital uh, you know uh, i don't have operating capital for example one is a capex the other one is opex so i am not able to invest into new facilities and new equipment and new technologies because that thereby i am able to produce newer products and uh, you know cutting edge uh, products at the same time i don't i, I don't have the op, uh, operating expenses uh, you know i don't have funds to meet the op operating expenses people leave because you are not able to pay salary so this could become a major bottleneck in your growth aspects to be avoided in company's product so these are uh, you know uh, things which you should take care factors that will adversely impact the company's sales you need to list down what are the factors you know if i do it it is going to impact my uh, and so you need to eliminate some of the processes some of the uh, areas where which you are present which are unproductive which are not needed anymore for your organization's growth so you have to identify those factors which are adversely impacting your uh, you know company's sales so that is very important perception of people related to company's weakness how do people perceive this company in terms of weaknesses do they uh, do they see it uh, you know way that uh, you know this company i am not uh, you know i am not likely to do business with i am not likely to buy products and services from this company this company lacks uh, that kind of uh, you know uh, leadership or uh, you know innovation in terms of you know why i should buy the product this product is a dull product this product doesn't meet my requirements this has become obsolete so nobody buys you know today p you know whether it is the whole industry is moving at a fast pace things are changing by the minute so you you have to be on feet uh, in order to uh, you know deliver products and services to uh, you know completely attract new customers new segments new segments of customers new markets so it is very very uh, critical so how do how does the market perceive your organization's weakness so you should know the market pulse this is the market pulse so how so then you can make corrective plans and actions so opportunities we talked about so the first two set of attributes the strengths and weakness are related to uh, the internal environment the capabilities of an organization whether it is strength or weakness now let's come to the external attributes opportunities you know they present huge potential for the organization to tap the, uh, those potential opportunities and then leverage in terms of business value in terms of uh, financial performance so good opportunities company can spot so you need to identify the list of opportunities that you can uh, address and then clearly have a debate uh, with strategic management team in terms of how you want to uh, you know which opportunities you want to uh, go after so you have to prioritize your uh, you know list Uh, in order to uh, be uh, able to uh, succeed uh, uh, in your strategy interesting trends uh, the company needs to track because there are many interesting trends happening in the marketplace so you need to be very watchful and on be on the lookout to capture those uh, uh, interesting trends happening ahead of time so that your uh, your marketing team and the r&d team can start working together to you know conceptualize and productize the new idea and deliver it uh, in, uh, in in with a faster time to market you know faster go to market kind of strategy so that's very important market segments and product segments that uh, uh, the competition are not addressing so you need to identify the gaps in the market 
So market gaps are identified which the competition is not addressing. So you need this idea to be filled with your new product and service. So that is another new opportunity for, uh, for the company to address. So this is a very important. These two trends and the gaps in the market. If you, if you are able to uh, address these two, I think you are almost covering more than 80% of uh, what you can address in the market in terms of potential business that you can bring to, the, bring to your company. Now let's come to the next, second environment external factor which is uh, analysis of threats. There are obstacles the company is facing. You know, there are uh, policies, there are regulations, there are industry competition, there are newer uh, competition coming in from the foreign markets. Uh, you know, uh, suddenly a recession comes, you know, uh, Lehman Brothers kind of, uh, you know, event happens and then the global markets go into a tailspin. So, how do you uh, prepare your organization to, uh, to be ready for such threats, face such threats and protect your organization not becoming, uh, by not becoming a victim to such threats and risks. So, it's very important. Obstacles that the company is facing, quality standards are changing day by day. So, this could, so how do you cope up with those uh, challenges? Changing technology, threatening, technology is getting obsolete day by day. Every year new technology is coming. So, how do you build those capabilities in your strategy? How do you build those plans into your strategy? It's very, very important. Changing technology, debt levels and cash flow problems. Your company is, uh, you know, having huge debt and then, you know, investors are uh, selling your stock. So, that creates a problem for your, uh, you know, because you, you have pledged your corporate, uh, you know, shares uh, to, to raise funds with the banks. So, what if the market value of the stock uh, stocks go down? So, you will be under pressure to raise margin money. So, thereby you get into a vicious cycle of uh, your stock going down further down and uh, you know you will not be able to sustain uh, unless you uh, you know uh, sell off your uh, non-core assets and then start the paying off the debt and then building more confidence into the financial system. So, I think it is very important uh, you know uh, the uh, company finance is managed, you have the right equity to debt level. Thereby, the investors look at your company that you are, you are accruing value in the long term to the shareholders. So, regulatory actions and its government policies that will impact the company. Any adverse, um, you know, there, there are many good things which are happening. The foreign, foreign direct investment is being opened up in the uh, different sectors like retail, insurance, uh, defense, aviation. So, uh, these could, uh, these industries could uh, you know, positively benefit. There are areas where, you know, some, uh, some in, uh, local companies get impacted because, for example, retail, if foreign direct investment in retail will impact the Indian co companies who have already put money in the retail business. So, those could, uh, you know, possibly can uh, hurt the existing organization, existing companies in that particular vertical or an industry segment. Uh, you know, or, 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 or it could be any product, you know, a company, Chinese products are being imported today. So, capital goods from China. So, Indian capital good companies are, uh, you know, it is hurting the Indian capital goods companies. So, obviously, the import uh, is, uh, you know, uh, allowing import from other countries will impact the performance of companies, uh, Indian companies, which have already invested in, in that particular segment. So, these areas you need to clearly uh, understand. Board's assessment and SWOT analysis need to possess adequate knowledge. Board should be capable of understanding uh, and they should have the industry experience and expertise to have, uh, you know, to an assessment, to do an assessment. These are the strategies that we need to go for, for, my, for my industry, for my business, for my organization and then this is how, you know, I, I, I build my strategy, formulate my strategy. Long term stability of the board, you have to have stable board uh, with uh, uh, you know executive directors and independent directors. So, uh, the stability of the board is very important because uh, you know you have no knowledge and uh, expertise being shared by the members of the board in order to uh, you know grow the company from one level to another level. The ability to represent the diverse interest of all stakeholders. So, you do you have the uh, you know ability to uh, you know, address all the, uh, you know, uh, address the interests of all stakeholders. The stakeholders can be the investors, the, uh, the management, the employees, customers, partners, the society at large. 
so society is also part of the uh, part of the ecosystem and uh, society is a stakeholder in your business so we will talk about that in, in, the, in the next subsequent slides balance stock holding and bond holding by the board so so you have to have the right equity uh, and debt which i said earlier also you have to have a balanced uh, you know uh, the investment coming from a balanced uh, portfolio of uh, investors who are uh, putting money in the form of equity and financial institutions putting in the uh, money in the form of debt corporate debt so uh, otherwise you know if you're depending on uh, if 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 your debt company is entirely funded by equity is good because you can uh, uh, you know you can invest and then uh, uh, invest into the right areas productive areas which will add more value to the company's stock value executive management assessment so first is a board level assessment then next next is executive level management executive management uh, assessment of swot swot analysis background and capabilities of top managers your leadership team the management team should have uh, you know the right level of capability uh, should have the industry domain experience they know this strategy is going to work this strategy is not going to work right so uh, it 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 uh, that becomes a foundation of strategic management process it can positively impact but if the right people are not there it can negatively impact as well can you are on the top management because you need to have uh, it helps the stable consistent strategy development the continuity is very important if every year uh, the leadership team changes so what happens uh, you know the continuity uh, uh, you know uh, gets impacted to a major extent because every time every year you can't build new strategies strategies can be dynamic it can be refined every year to reflect the market reality but it can you cannot completely redo the strategy and then uh, you know uh, every year new leadership team is there because of that you know the new ceo joins and then he brings in a new strategy along with him so it it will it will uh, the stability will go for a big toss individual top managers lead the strategy execution and implementation processes the middle uh, the senior level management uh, the ma managers and the middle level managers who are entrusted with uh, the strategy execution process they should have uh, the right capability they should bring in value uh, in terms of domain expertise in terms of uh, engaging with people under them in terms of uh, carrying on the vision and objectives strategic objectives you know into a, into a flawless execution line managers next comes to line managers the individual uh, lines of businesses uh, availability of comprehensive resource planning program so you need to have a clear proactive system and process in place for planning your resources ensuring that the organization has talent management and retention program which i said human resources is one of the important cornerstones of strategic management process so in the strategy formulation process so obviously human resources talent management and retention management these two become become very critical uh, part of the employee engagement training and development is an incentive it's a motivation to the team uh, to the employees to retain them in the long run and they come and contribute you know uh, there is a saying you know what if i invest on the uh, employees and they get trained and then what if they leave the organization which happens you know uh, so you get certified on particular area of technology or a particular area of functional or domain expertise then you leave the organization whatever you have invested it is gone but what if you don't uh, train them they will become obsolete the the whole uh, uh, the entire uh, the people resource uh, will not be able to catch up in terms of market demand market requirements thereby your uh, people will not be in a position to address the market requirements they will not be in a position to put a, a competitive strategy uh, 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 a cutting edge strategy which will help the organization in terms of its future growth so uh, training and development you have to invest it's a long term investment strategic investment not to look at one or two people will be leaving hence i don't want to invest that myopic myopic kind of a approach should not be taken levels of attrition especially at key positions so how do you address the uh, attrition levels you know at, at very key you know at key talent positions so uh, employee engagement talent management key talent program retention program long term incentive plan training and development these are few things that you can do to ensure that levels of attrition are controlled in key uh, functional areas 
because these positions will add a lot of value to the company's financial performance. Effectiveness of performance appraisal, the PMS system in uh, performance management system has to be effective. It should not be subjective, it should be very objective. Every employee should know what their KRAs are, what their KPIs are. It's all clearly metric driven. So uh, it's, it's very important to say that the PMS cannot be a, just an eye wash and at the end of the year the manager spends some time, you know, try to evaluate uh, the employee subjectively. No, it is a very objective, it should be done on a quarter on quarter basis, half yearly basis and the yearly basis. So performance appraisal systems should be very objective oriented, the objective should, objectivity should be clearly established and everybody should be measured on the KPI metrics. The effectiveness is the most important thing. So organizational resources we talked about, uh, you know, how do we, uh, you know, manage all of that under the SWOT analysis. Consistency in corporate and business functional level strategies. So we talked about three level strategies uh, in the last three chapters, corporate level strategy, business unit level strategy and functional unit level strategy. So that should be consistency and uniformity and linkage between all the three. All the three should move in tandem because you cannot have disparate strategies and then expect the organization to achieve its uh, innovation. That's not possible. Consistency in organization strategy and mission, that is your mission is this and your strategy is this. So these two have to have mapping and have to have consistency with each other. Consistency between organization strategy and culture. So that is very important. Your organization strategy, mission is this, your strategy is this, your culture. So you need to create value system that becomes the culture of the organization, that becomes the DNA of the organization in order to uh, you know, run uh, in order to move forward and that movement uh, is consistent with a strategy and mission. So that culture is very important. Consistency between organization strategy and its structure. You cannot form a structure and form the strategy. You are putting people in place because you know some people. I want to satisfy those people and then put them into some positions and then start following, uh, start building the strategy. First starts with mission, second is your strategy, third is your structure. So, uh, strategy follows mission, structure follows strategy. That's how, uh, you know, the, the sequence should be. Mission, strategy and structure. So, consistency between the different levels of, uh, uh, you know, strategy making uh, should be achieved. Without that, the, uh, the whole organization will not, be move in, move, will not move in one direction. Because if you, if you start moving in different directions, you will not see the forward moment. So the forward moment will, movement will only happen if there is consistency between corporate level strategy, business unit level strategy, functional unit level strategy, consistency between strategy and mission, consistency between strategy and culture, consistency between strategy and structure. So these are the few things that you need to keep in mind while doing the strategy formulation. Position in the industry, you need to know what position that I have? Am I in the leadership position? Am I a challenger? Am I a visionary? Am I a niche player? Am I a laggard? So these are the different levels that you can define your organization, your business. So clearly, if you know, if you if you baseline your industry, baseline your business with respect to your industry, then you'll be able to clearly put the, uh, you know, this is the milestone that I want to achieve in the next one year, two, three, two, two or three years. So otherwise, you'll not be, if you don't baseline your position, you'll not be able to clearly make the strategy work. Level of product quality and service. So this is very given, it, it, is, it, is, it has to be taken care. Otherwise, you cannot sustain, you cannot exist in the market. So that the strategic manager should know. These are all organizational resources. So, so we need to do an analysis. Reputation of the organization in the market. What kind of reputation you are bringing in? We have talked about it uh, earlier in this chapter. What kind of branding? Are you an aggressive brand? Are you a brand which is associated with a particular attributes of a value system? Are you a brand which is known for only marketing? Are you a brand you are known for your service standards? Are you a brand you are known for your uh, society, contribution to the society? So, your association of your brand with the market, with the environment is very important. So how the organization is being perceived? What kind of reputation you have built over a period of time? What kind of reputation you want to build, credentials you want to build going forward? So all that desired your, you know, strategy. So let's talk about physical resources. So we have seen about uh, the HR resources, we have talked about the financial resources, we have talked about 
organizational resources now we are going to talk about physical resources currency of technology so has the technology in line with what the market needs am i able to produce products and services the market uh, requires have have i become uh, you know obsolete so you need to ask these questions currency of technology in terms of upgradation innovation refreshment you need to continuously invest you need to be continuously be innovative distribution network reach and penetration do you have the right level of market reach uh, capabilities go to market capabilities do you are you a direct sales organization direct marketing company are you a channel driven company or you are a distribution network company so you need to have the reach and penetration in various regions in order to achieve your strategy production capacity do you have any constraints on the production there is a huge demand but your production is capped at a particular level so you are not you are not able to encash on the market opportunity that is there but you are going on the fixed uh, you know capacity kind of a uh, model which is not going to work so how do you how are you able to what is the power that you have to increase your increase or decrease your capacity based on the market demand so you don't lose market share you don't uh, unnecessarily waste your uh, you know idle capacity also so that is very important how resilient your organization is in terms of uh, resource planning and capacity planning access to cost effective and reliable supplies so are you able to uh, uh, have uh, you know is your factory situated near Uh, the uh, the source of uh, the raw materials that the company needs so are you able to transport it with the least uh, cost are you able to get manpower at optimum cost are you able to train them and then put them on the job uh, at the minimum cost so you need to look at the the uh, you know cost effective means of uh, you know bringing reliable supplies in order to make the final product available to the market key locations leading to low cost so what are the key locations you know you are looking you know i would i would like to give an example of titan titan industries is part of that uh, you know tata group which was a watch making company it has become a lifestyle company uh, you know pr- uh, you know marketing uh, producing and marketing jewelry and uh, etc etc lifestyle things lifestyle products so they started the factory in hosur they they brought in hundreds of young people young uh, you know graduates they put them into the training and they you know groomed them into the, uh, uh, into the factory uh, engineers so i think this is a very tremendous effort from tata group uh, when they started their uh, factory in uh, hosur in tamil nadu uh, i think it's it's a, uh, it's a cre- the credit goes to the tata group in terms of you know giving employment giving social opportunity and then you know you're not bringing people from the big cities like bangalore or chennai you are actually going around the nearby uh, neighborhood and you are bringing those people who 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 are actually uh, you know living below the per capita productivity and giving more opportunities to them for a, a you know great livelihood so i think uh, that that's one ex- example how do you bring cost effective resources to uh, you know uh, to your organization in the strategy formulation process key locations that's what i was referring to hosu being a, a low cost location but you are not compromising on the quality you know your strategy is very clear i want low resources but i want to help them at the same time i am able to have economic benefit and social impact i think these two things this is the purpose of the organization so you you can make a economic impact and a social impact if these two can be balanced i think you know you will have every, everything else fall in place now we are coming to the important tool which is strength weakness and opportunity threat matrix which is after the swot analysis you have captured the top 3 or 4 strengths weaknesses and opportunities and threats what are the strategic alternatives i need to have in order to achieve my vision so now let's talk about a company uh, in this uh, particular slide this company has financial stability good brand name and recognition large internal cash balance technology and product capability and customer service this is on the strength side on the weakness side loss of market share in one business gaps in product mix they don't have the full uh, life cycle of all the products no international presence low margin business line over dependence on partners so this is a weakness opportunities the market is presenting a fast growth for services a competition with complement products your you know you, there is a competition available with complementing products 
Demand from global markets, obviously demand is there, so you can expand into global uh, markets. Threats, increasing competition, government policy and taxation hitting margins, customer churn. So the, once this is laid out from the analysis of the SWOT, so these are the th areas, three or four areas that I want to focus on. You, you've got number of strengths and number of weaknesses and number of opportunities and number of uh, threats. But I want to focus on three or four. So now, what are the strategic alternatives? There are six strategic alternatives that you can think of. Acquire a competition with complementing products, which is a combination of you've got financial stability, you've got large cash balance, you can, you can go for a buyout, weak, weakness, you, you have gaps in products, you have opportunity of a competition with complementing products. So you can acquire the company. So that is why acquire a competition with complementing products. Sometimes exit the business with high competition and low margin because of government policy. So uh, we are talking about weakness for low margin business line is there. So I want to divest this or sell off that, liquidate that particular uh, business line, exit the business with high competition and low margin. So it's a combination of W4, weakness 4, T1, increasing competition and customer churn. Sorry, uh, government policy on taxation. Leverage customer service and services marketing to address customer churn. S5 is customer service. At the same time, O1 opportunity is fast growing in service. T3 is customer churn. So you're combining this and have a clear marketing plan to leverage the customer service and how do I arrest the customer churn, right? Acquire modern technology and expand uh, uh, launch of new product lines. So again, S3 cash balance, S4 technology and product capability, opportunity one fast growing in service. So so this is how you arrive at the strategic alternatives and options. You know, form strategic alliance with a suitable foreign firm to enter you know, newer markets, en enter the global market. You know, so first you cannot set up your own business there. So you need to first have a feel of your business there in the newer market. So for that you need to have a JV or you need to have a uh, you know partnership alliance with uh, a local firm which is having a uh, you know, tremendous marketing capability. S1, S2, which are clearly your brand is known. For example, Tata Nano, while it was not, uh, not a hit in India, it has been rebranded, it has been um, you know, relaunched in Indonesian market. So next six months, the Tata Motors will monitor this particular uh, product line in that, local, uh, in that foreign market and then come and relaunch the Nano product in India. I think that's a tremendous ex example of you know forming this uh, you know the strategy where you know you're trying to launch a new product in the uh, foreign market with a with a uh, you know uh, with your local presence there. Initiate lobbying with government to address the policy issues. So you can address the government policy issues on taxation, uh, you know through your brand name, through your uh, financial stability capability, weakness, loss of market share. You can go and present a business case to the government saying that I am losing market share. Uh, because of competition from outside, so how do we, uh, you know, take care of the opportunity that is available in the local market? So these are the six strategic opportunities that you can come out with, and then the organization can have a clear strategic roadmap. This, this is this is how the strategy formulation evolves, uh, right from a SWOT analysis to a SWOT matrix. It's a framework which can, which any organization can use in order to formulate the strategy. Choosing the best strategic alternatives. Now, now you've got six options. So, which is the which are the ones that you will choose? Ensure that the strategic manager is clear about the current challenges, your mark, your vision, your current challenges, your your market, uh, your aspirations, your objectives, and the decision criteria. You need to have a clear decision criteria. These are the areas that I'm going to have strategic projects I'll be running. These strategic projects will be, uh, you know, clearly KPI'd in terms of metrics measurement, monitoring, and evaluation which we will see it in the next chapter. Consistent with mission and other strategies. Communication with all the stakeholders, which is very important. Your board, the top management has to inform the board, the employees, your customers, your partners, your, uh, your you know, the market at large. Communication is a key element in the overall strategy making process. Need to fit the company's product life, uh, life cycle position. So how do you clearly, uh, you know, uh, fit the company's product life cycle, uh, uh, you know, into your overall strategy. So that positioning has to be very clear. 
management ethics and social responsibility there is a separate sub, uh, chapter on uh, corporate governance and social responsibility we will be talking in detail about that however i want to touch upon few things uh, in this chapter itself because it's part of the strategy formulation process you have to align your corporate governance system also with the strategy formulation process the first one is integrity honesty in dealings uh, honesty in dealing with uh, everything stand for right respect for treating everyone with dignity and fairness accountability for actions in honor and commitments responsibility conduct business as a responsible citizens corporate social responsibility is pursuing sustainable business in the form of self regulation integrated into the business model so how much you are contributing back to the society in terms of uh, the various programs that you can think of today uh, indian uh, companies act uh, has stipulated that 2% of your profit has to be uh, earmarked for uh, corporate social responsibility programs so it is compulsory it is mandatory today for any listed company to invest back into the society which becomes part of their vision now so it is not your financial performance or economic interest but also the social interest that you are able to demonstrate in the long run from a summary standpoint we have seen uh, you know the whole uh, you know right from strategy formulation to uh, uh, you know swot analysis introduction of uh, you know uh, uh, swot analysis strengths weaknesses and uh, you know opportunities and threats we also use those uh, swot analysis uh, to form a strategic uh, you know form a strategic alternative table which is a matrix which is given by swot matrix so you have a clear uh, strategic uh, you 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 come out with clear strategic alternatives and options and then you choose the best strategic alternative from that list you know and then finally the corporate uh, governance uh, becomes uh, a very key part and integral part of the overall strategy formulation process strategic managers must conduct this swot analysis which is an integral part of the strategy formulation process swot matrix generates all strategic alternatives and options by combining the internal and external factors analyzed in the swot analysis that you've seen corporate social responsibilities and codes of code of ethics and conduct should be integral part of the strategic decision making process so with that you know we come to the end of strategic formulation process and i hope you have enjoyed the listening to this lecture if you have any doubt you can uh, send me your queries through v school i'll be more than glad to address them so uh, i thank you for your attention and thank you so much for uh, um, you know attending to this class i'll be meeting you in the next chapter strategic execution and implementation thank you